All right, nice. there, we go. there we go. Recording it says it. Well, thank you guys for joining this midweek devotional. Uh, this week I have Pastor Chris England. Can I call you Pastor? Ex Pastor. Ex Pastor. Soon to be <laughs> Pastor, because yeah, I don't know. But in yeah. between, yeah. In between Pastor, yeah. In between Pastor Chris England. We'll call yeah. you that. That would be good. I like that. That works. But yeah, I got him this week, and I was just going to interview him a bit. Uh, I've interviewed his sister, Lauren, uh, the past couple of weeks, who just got out of quarantine. So Chris is in the coast because he moved away from Toowoomba because he's a horrible person and left me. But that's all right. But he's a really good guy. But I'm just going to hand it over to him, and he's just going to tell us a little bit about himself and, yeah, just a little bit about his journey with God. So, yeah, take it away, Chris. Yeah. So... Really quick snapshot. In some ways, I am the beginning of my journey was somewhat stereotypical. I was a pastor's kid, so grew up in Churches of Christ. Um, my dad, though, finished up at some point. We moved to Toowoomba and been there for 23 years, where a lot of my development, both in my faith and who I am, um, my relationships, all of that kind of really happened in Toowoomba. So, Toowoomba really is, in a lot of ways, my home. Uh, in that that is what helped me become who I am today through those friendships and those relationships. Uh, uh, along the way, I, I got older, which is, it's, this weird, yeah, it's a weird thing that happens from year to year, and got married, began a career in kind of the graphic design space, uh, and then kind of fell into ministry. The, the, the real story of how I got into ministry is a bit longer and a little bit sad. Um, but essentially, I, I kind of fell into it. The children pastors at Hume Ridge Church finished up and I loved working with kids and had a real desire to commun- work with kids. Got the uh, temporary job. Six months later, they didn't find anyone. So they said, do you want to keep doing it? And then after a while, they said, well, you've been filling in. Do you just want to have the job now? So it was a, it was a great opportunity. Um, one that I shouldn't have had. I was very young at the time and it was a big portfolio, but thankfully they took a risk on me and just had great mentors and fell in love with ministry and did that for about 10 years, moving into different areas, into young adults for a while until moving to the coast and started a church down here, which didn't go as well as I would have liked, um, but really probably on the type of church that I wanted to create, the type of people that I wanted to um, have involved um, realized that there was a there was a misfit with what we were doing and so parted ways and I've actually yeah I haven't been a pastor I haven't worked in a church now for almost two years coming up on two years um, but out of that has been a plan to start a new church with my sister um, which is we've been working on for about 12 months now and really looking forward to how that progresses and how that evolves into what it is uh, so yeah that's a very quick Quick rundown, married, four kids. I currently work in advertising, digital advertising, which is a very strange thing to go, you know, you have a conversation saying, hey, what do you do? I said, well, I work, you know, I work in Facebook advertising. So what did you do before that as well as a pastor? Um, so it's it's been a good little run. No, that's awesome. That's a great snapshot. And yeah, Chris is kind of, well, if you don't know, he kind of got me into ministry. He was the one who asked me when I was a chappy if I wanted to help out with kids and Similar thing. I was the interim and then they couldn't find anyone better. So I got the role. So <laughs> Chris kind of talked me up, which was great. But yeah. Plan I, came together. Yeah. But you're you're a legend. So I think, yeah, I love Thank you, Matthew. hearing about your journey and just how open you are. And that's why I'd love to ask uh, one of our values that we have at church now is being vulnerable. And uh, I told you when I first chatted to you, the little blurb underneath it that we have but I wanted to get your thoughts on it because I guess uh working with you at Humeridge for a little bit and then just being friends I guess we're friends are we friends yeah I guess Eh, uh, pretty good friends and like getting to yeah see the way you do family and everything like that you just really scream this value to me in a lot of ways with the way that you act and conduct yourself but I'd love your your thoughts about that like what are your thoughts around being vulnerable what do you think it means for a church to do that and yeah, just anything around that. So pass it over to you. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's something that at least for me is, is if I'm with people that I can trust or 
if I don't mind about what information I share, vulnerability is something that probably is a bit more of just what I lend myself to. I, I, I find it very powerful um, for myself because you kind of get away from, for lack of a better word, the fakeness from the story that we, we try to put out there and you just see reality. You, you see life for what it is. Uh, so I've always been someone that really enjoys that. And, you know, a lot of times if I'm having a conversation with someone, like if, if, you, if you're not being vulnerable or if you're not kind of really sharing what's deep inside, well, I, I'm the sort of guy that's like, well, what are we even talking about then? So, I mean, that's, I don't know if that's vulnerable. Well, it is a bit, but it can be a bit brutal. Um, but I, I wanted to just talk like on that idea is, um, so, you know, I've been working in, in advertising now for a year and a half and every, well, over a year and a half. And I've just really, no, I haven't over a year. <laughs> I'm getting my timelines mixed up and I've just really valued the company I've worked for. And I've been so impressed by the culture that they've built uh, is just an amazing culture. Uh, and so it's just a great work environment, which, which is funny because you, when you, when you talk about, you know, digital advertising, it's quite a ruthless environment where vulnerability um, and what I want to kind of focus on empathy is not the first attribute you would think of when it comes to advertising and when it's all about selling and the hustle and marketing and getting these products and e-commerce and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but one of the things that we as a company have really focused on is, is our clients and uh, ensuring that it, it's obviously we have to turn a profit. Um, but after that, what, what is our relationship? Are they just a client? And one of the things that we say is that we want to be able to eat in their kitchen, meaning um, we don't want to just be the agency that they hired or that outside source. We want to be part of their team. And when we dig in deeper, so how do you, how do you do that? It comes down to trust. And I'm going to keep kind of getting layer there until we actually get to the idea of vulnerability. Uh, and trust is, is this important thing that we want our clients to have in us. And we want to trust them as well in, in what they're doing. And a huge amount of studies are coming out in business in that being just the most important thing, not just for business, but for communities. Because the reality is that these days, if we're looking at a product, if you're wanting to buy a new toaster, you have 20 different products you can choose from. If you want to join a new community, heck, I mean, you've got, if you want to join a new church, you've got in Toowoomba 117 different churches to choose from. If you want to join a new community group, there's so much options. So what, what different, well, what's the difference between this toaster and that toaster between that church and this church? And sure, there's, there's quality. There's in a church, there's style of theology and all those sorts of things. But one of the most important things is, is trust can I trust this organization organization with who I am that if the opportunity came for me to be vulnerable or to really show myself, do they have my back and can I have their back in what they're doing? And, you know, for us as a business, that's a, it's a big thing. And, and so for us, we, we really dived in and looked at, well, what does it mean to have trust and how do we build trust? And we looked at this idea of empathy, um, which I think is, is part of, you know, being vulnerable because, Empathy is picking up on those vulnerable aspects of a person. So when someone is like, what's a person's motive? Or what's a person's emotions? What are they really saying? What's the body language? And in a person to, to be vulnerable and to share some of those things, it really takes another person then, you know, to have this skill set of being empathizing with another to, to read them because of what that creates, which is relationship. So, yeah, I, th I think we're talking about being vulnerable. It's this two-way invitation. Um, like if I, if I came, I've come along to Highfields, I used to come along quite often, but if I come along to Highfields next week, and I, I, I went a couple of months ago, um, like I'm not going to go there and, and be vulnerable straight up. And that's hard because, well, if I'm not vulnerable, well, then how, do we, how does the, the opportunity for, for empathy come up? How does the opportunity for trust to build? How do I then become part of your community? Well, the answer is, well, I'd be vulnerable first with the person I'm talking to to be vulnerable for me. Yeah. Um, because if I come in and someone, we just start talking, and I'm not saying that if I came into your church tomorrow matter and you come up to me and then all of a sudden you're super vulnerable and download all this stuff and then we, I'd probably freak out and run away. But the idea of, of not pretending, like not saying something yeah. that's not true or, or trying to, uh, you know, make something grander than it was, you'd be real. Like I 
how was your week? You know, it was actually, it was pretty tough, um, but it ended well. Like, you know, it's a simple thing because yeah. why, why is it that whenever we say, you know, how you going? Yeah, good, thanks. It's just a straight up answer. Like, and I mean, nine out of 10 times, if someone answers you, asks you that. The truth is your week was really dodgy. <laughs> like it yeah. was a bad week. Like work sucked or the kids just ruined something. I've lost it on the glass because the kids knocked it over. Um, whatever it might be, the car broke down. Um, coronavirus is just being dodgy to me this week and I'm feeling really lonely because I can't see my friends, I can't see my family Um, vulnerability says it's okay to say that Um, vulnerability says this is who I really am and I'm going to give that to you now and you have a choice to make with that It's, it's my gift and you'd hope the other person empathizes and hears what's going on and listens and sees your body language um, so I guess that's my big long riff of, of, of vulnerability and the gift it is to, to give to someone so that they get to be empathetic towards you yeah. and then they might be vulnerable back to you or maybe in a couple of weeks time and you get to then empathize with them. You get to hear them and you get to understand their motives and their language and what's going on. Because when you, when you do that, when you give the gift of vulnerability, when you get to practice empathy with one another, it builds trust and trust is the difference that you will make in a person's life because trust is pretty hard to come by. And yeah, it's again, um, when I was talking about this with some of the guys at work, it's crazy how much of this now plays out in business. Like you just notice advertising you see this ad and you see this lovely family and they're doing something or they help something out. It's this big mission. You're like, Oh wow, this must be like a new ad for compassion. And then you get the big McDonald's sign at the end. You're like, wait, what? Because people are trying to, we're selling trust now, right? Like it's, we're we're not selling a burger. Um, But I think the thing is, is that the church, like we're in a way the church, Jesus was kind of the owner of trust. Like he was the one that said it was a big deal. 2000 years ago and we're only just catching on yeah um so it's not like we're trying to use this marketing technique it's kind of saying well hang on no no the reason marketing or business is using these is because it turns out what jesus was saying and what jesus was portraying and putting out there was the best way for human connection and relationship trust empathy vulnerability Um, so I think that's really cool. Like for me, you know, it's really cool being in a business setting and seeing that in a business, in a business now, it's now actually good practice and and profitable to be vulnerable, um, to, to empathize, which is a, it's a bizarre shift that we're kind of seeing. Yeah, no, I think it's awesome. And I think, uh, even when you talked about, how taking those baby steps when it comes to being vulnerable so not like buying everything because if i just go up to like some random in church and tell them all my problems i think anyone's gonna run yeah off. that guy's crazy but like just yeah. talk and ask a little bit like i remember when i first met you you did that a lot with me which led to us having great conversations i remember at humorage i used to come sit in your office on that red couch and we would always have deep mm. and meaningfuls or something and yeah, but it kind of all started from those little baby steps that like you took and then I take one and it's it's kind of like a, a gift that is a bit of a juggle. But if you step into it slowly, it really grows. So, and I think it's awesome. Yeah. Are we using it and stuff? So. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, that's it. Like it's baby steps and like it, it's hard um, sometimes to know what, how much should I be vulnerable or what can I reveal and, and sometimes like for people if you haven't been vulnerable before it's just saying well look, it's, it's i'm gonna make a choice and be vulnerable in this space of my life it's, it's not that you have to do all of this but just say you know what i'm gonna make the choice now where, where i'm gonna be honest on how my week's going or like i think one of the, the best things is particularly for for families for parents to be vulnerable about your kids mm. uh, you know how's how's Jojo going in school. Oh yeah, great. No, he's not. Yeah, oh, you've just sent him to timeout. You yelled at him for three hours in the morning. He doesn't eat his breakfast on time. Like, come on, come on. Our kids are not going well. They frustrate us so much. 
<laughs> and 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 like I don't know if you've had this, but I'm sure other people probably have. You know when someone kind of reveals to you how their kids are really going, or that stupid thing the kid did. Yeah. In your head, you know, it's like, oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. But in your head, you're going, oh my goodness, thank the Lord, someone else is having the same issue as me. Like, isn't that what we all want to do? Like, we're, we're all having the same problems and issues. It's not like ours is different to someone else's. It's just <laughs> we're scared yeah. of, of the face that we're going to reveal or that we're going to turn out to be not the most amazing parents or our kids aren't the most amazing. I shouldn't say that. So I'm not trying to say that my kids are awful all the time. Like, no, no, I get what you mean, though. Like, 99% you, like, of the time they're awful. Yeah, it's like that relief you get when someone yeah. else... Yeah. And I think, like... Uh, I don't know. I know I'm really thankful for our relationship because I know when stuff happened at Hume Ridge and I found out some news that wasn't happy. Uh, I called my, my wife, Kim, which was good to call first. But then <laughs> I'm sitting there about who to call next. And I remember I called you and like, yeah. you know, it was really vulnerable and we had a great convo, but like you from those baby steps, like these great relationships can grow that kind of help sustain you and, and, and guide you in those tough times and yeah 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 and right that's a really key part i think of vulnerability as well is is the amount of credit you build up with another person or community mm. when things are tough mm. um like again referencing back to business you know one of the, the great things about business is that you know for me working in advertising sometimes the advertising is going really poorly and it's costing them money and they're not making profits um, but if we have trust, if we've been vulnerable, if we've worked on empathy with one another, um, it gets us through those tough times. And I think the same for relationships, um, for a church, like, you know, a church can be going through a, a rough time, but if there is enough trust there, you know, the people trust in the leadership or they trust in that person. They trust in why, because vulnerability has been at the, the core of, of those relationships. So yeah, it's, it's such a valuable resource if you look at it like that but really it's just a valuable thing that that jesus i believe teaches us in so many of the stories and the interactions he had with people no don't worry i i agree i think it's it's such a a valuable thing and i think it's something that yeah we don't realize the power in and the credit that you can build up and yeah how how much that can help you in times like i i'm sure you've had the same thing leading ministries but i know when i was at humorage leading kids church like i built up that trust so my leaders had a lot of trust in me for some strange reason yep they don't get why but for some reason <laughs> but like you know and half the time was catching up with them having coffee and just chatting and you know actually building those friendships which still now i check in on them because i think when you're vulnerable it kind of yeah it gets real you get away from yeah them. So, no, I think that's an awesome point. Well, I guess I know you're working and you, you, you took a little break from work to chat to me. So I'm super thankful for that. But I guess my last thing to kind of wrap it up and just stay with this same topic is what, do you, what would you be your encouragement for us as a church if we really want to take on board this value? Because I think oftentimes churches... Uh, do these vision and value things where they like, you know, get together, they sit in rooms, like leadership teams plan it out and it looks all cool. And then they put it up and then they don't really do it. It just, it's like words on a wall or on a website or on a Facebook post. And I guess uh, for me, that's one of my things. I don't want us to turn these into that. So what would be some encouragement or something that you think we need to be aware of as a church? trying to move forward in this value of being vulnerable. Yeah. Like I might, I might take a, a broader view of that in, in kind of just in adopting values and stuff. And let me preface this by saying <laughs> I'm in a position right now to say this because I have no allegiance to a specific uh, church or, or group, um, but probably just speaking from some of the difficulties in being in ministry and and really it's this is no not no one's going to be 100% happy like if 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 joe and Jeanette were 100% happy it means that every single other person won't be 100% happy 
mm. because we all like we all have our own giftings we all have our own things that we like and we all have our own things that we think are valuable depending on our stories depending on our how god has created us to be mm. so my encouragement and again i don't really like to say this to you know your community is is just do it and and don't like fixate on the things that you could be doing and not because it's not important not because these other things aren't but because as a church as a leadership you've identified being vulnerable is actually really really valuable mm -hmm. and and while it might you might not think it is and while you might not you might have other um aspects or characteristic values that you think are really important it's not going to help it's not going to build the church it's not going to build community uh if everyone's going in a whole bunch of different directions like this is uh this um, i should think of a better metaphor but you know like the horse and carriage santa and his reindeer yeah yeah, yeah. If you, you imagine if they're all going in their own direction because they believe that was the best direction to go in you'd go nowhere and sometimes you just have to do it for the sake of the church for the sake of the people that in this season you're trying to to be involved with mm. um so yeah it's to say it might not be your thing but i think you can make it your thing for this season knowing that it's not forever it's yeah. it's a season like this your the church right now is saying we want to be vulnerable and there's some you know, I think there's some really good evidence. I think there's really great stories in scripture. I think there's lots of good things that say, yeah, this is worthwhile. And even though it's not my thing, I'm going to do it yeah. because I'm going to do it for those sitting next to me. Mm -hmm. um, and for those who one day will be sitting next to me. So yeah, just no. do it. I like it. Just do it. That's like a Nike ad or something. You can tell you in the advertising now. Yeah. yeah. When I, when I start using more marketing slogans than scripture, you know, that I've been in marketing for too long. No, uh, it, I, it's, it's been so good being in marketing, like doing this job and I'm so thankful for it. Um, it just kind of gives me, yeah, it's given me an insight into the church and realizing more about humans in a way like marketing. And that's what we're kind of about is, is understanding humans and yeah and, and there's a lot of similarities between advertising and church so it's cool no that's awesome well thank you so much for joining we'll have to you know sometime when you're down love to have you preach and share at our church or something but yeah thank you so much for your time and yeah we'll have to chat again soon anytime matthew and the community of highfields <laughs>